Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today I'm working on this walnut display cabinet. And this is a piece that I've had for years and years. I purchased this from an antique store um, probably when I was in my first property, which was a condo. And I've had it ever since. But until now, I really didn't think about doing anything with it other than stripping it back to the bare wood. We're just taking off the areas that we're not gonna be painting. If you rip this on a little bit of an angle, you can see it right into the corner. So when you use frog tape, it has a special chemical in the back. And as soon as a little bit of moisture hits this edge, it locks it tight so the paint won't bleed under it. It costs more than regular tape, but it, it works really well. I'm gonna show you two ways of taping a corner. One of them, you run a piece across. Your next piece, you either cut on an angle, or you just tear it on an angle. And then you can feed that corner right into the corner to get a nice tight fit. Another way of doing it, if you come over here, cut your piece longer, feed it along this edge, and when you get to this corner, just use your nail to get it into the corner, and then take your knife and cut like that. Look at that, perfect corner. Now when you come down, with your tape. You don't have to get back in the corner. You've already got in the corner. So you just come across like this. Makes it much easier. This is going to be a challenge because we have a bit of a molding here to come down into. So that's why I don't cut my nails too short. <laughs> you can use a little burnishing tool or whatever you have to push that down later to get it really tight. When you're taping, just pull on your tape a little bit to keep it taut as you're pushing it down. There you go. And now we'll use paper to fill this in, just in case we get drips when we're painting up here. So here we've got one side taped up. We're just finishing off the bottom here, and as you can see, we're just using cheap masking tape. We're taping from paper to green, so it's not hitting the wood, so cheap tape here. What I have here are the interior shelves, and I'm a little uncertain as to whether I need to put a stain blocker on this before I paint. So I think I'm just going to try one of the shelves, let it dry, and see what happens. What I'm going to be using is this Dixie Belle chalk paint. It's a mineral chalk paint, and this is a gorgeous color called Haint Blue. I like to keep the lid on so that I can just cover it as I go so it doesn't dry out too much. And I just want to show you that while I'm painting these shelves, I've got them propped on these paint pyramids here, and that's so I can get around the edges. So I'm not going to bother with the back edge. You're not going to see that once it's in the cabinet, but this front edge, I want to get around. So I'm just going to dip into the paint and start at one end here. I'm going to miss my brush as I go. I'm really loving that color. I think it's going to brighten up the interior. Now what I would suggest is that when you start to paint any piece, like a shelf, you should start in the middle and work out to the edges. And that's so you don't get paint drips over the edge. Sometimes these things are such a tight fit that even the slightest bit of paint on the edge will really affect the fit of it. So I'm just going to feather out to the edge and there's absolutely nothing coming over, nothing to pool there because I started in the middle. Now because this is a light color, it will need two coats. It's better to do two light coats than one heavy coat. Again, I'm going to dip into the paint, start where I left off, and work out to the edge. Now, because the paint's already on, I'm just gonna mist it so I can feather out. Now, try not to go back and forth over the dry areas, because that will just encourage brush marks. If you happen to miss a few spots on this first coat, it's not really that big a deal, because you will go over it again on the second coat and you can just be sure to hit the areas that you've missed. And misting the paint really helps extend it out to the edges here so that I don't get those drips happening. Now another way of painting the shelf here is to have it on a Lazy Susan so that it's easier just to turn it around. My Lazy Susan is somewhere in the studio, I've misplaced it for now. That's what happens when you've got a few projects going on at the same time. 
To paint the front edge, I'm just going to come in with my brush and I'm just going to come up from the bottom and just meet the edge as you see me doing here. And then I'll just take one long stroke along. I'm going to start by clear coating the top of this walnut cabinet. So I'm going to be using a clear coat satin. I'm just going to brush with the grain. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to be using my angle brush here. I don't know if the camera is picking this up, but it's kind of taking on this purpley hue as I put it on, but it will dry clear. Next up, I'm starting on the side and I'm gonna be using Dixie Belle chalk paint in a color called Peacock Blue. And I think I'm gonna start off with my mini angle brush here because I wanna get into the corners. But then when I come to detail work like the side here, I'm probably gonna use this French tip so that I can get right into the detail. To start, I'm gonna mist my brush. I'm dipping into the paint. Now, I did not notice that there was bleed through on this little test strip that I did. So I'm really hoping that that is the case and that it's not just that little patch. Now with some of these darker colors, you can do just one coat because there is pretty good coverage. We'll see how it looks. Just continue to mist your brush as it gets dry. I love how this angle brush gets into all the corners here. Now the top of this trim is going blue too, so I'm not being too particular with trying to be neat at the edge, but I don't want it clumping either. It could very well be that one coat is gonna be okay for the side here because I think what I'm gonna end up doing is also putting a stencil on here. I'm not quite sure yet. So I like to do things in stages. I'll do the minimal amount of work for what I have in mind. And then I'll just step back and see whether I want to go to the next step in the process. It's always a work in progress. I find that when I come to the bottom here, it's better to hold the paintbrush like I'm showing you here. And that gives me a much better grip to be able to come down and avoid drips off the edge. So now I'm just gonna finish off this edge here. Make sure that I'm getting right into the corner. I'm finding the mini angle brush really great for getting into these crevices of the fluting. So I'm going to stick with this. I'm not going to switch over. I'm just going to use this all the way through since I've already got it going. When you finish off, just be sure that you're catching any drips that's occurring in these crevices. Just catch them before they dry and then take some long strokes down to finish. When it comes time to do this fluted trim here, you're going to offload the majority of your paint in the middle. And then when the brush is dry, you're gonna come across and fill in the edges. And that's so, just in case the tape isn't secure on the side here, you're not gonna be getting paint underneath. And then once that's done, you're just gonna take long strokes down to smooth it out and then move on to the next section. Now I'm switching over to my Dixie Belle French tip brush and I'm gonna come in and get into all this detail. And 
and this pointy tip is really ideal for getting into all these nooks and crannies here. So I'm just basically stippling in and brushing out until it's smooth. Now I did forget to wash this out properly and I do have a few bristles coming out. So I'm going to take the time to wash this out before I proceed because I don't want bristles getting stuck into all this beautiful detail. So here's where we're at so far. We've done all of the blue trim, or most of it anyways, and we clear coated the top. Still have to do the inside. There's really no easy way of doing that. You've just got to get in there and do it. Ideally, if you could take the back off, that would be the ideal situation, but this is nailed right on. First coat of paint is on, and it's looking pretty good. I don't know if you can see this on camera, if it's going to pick it up. But there are a few areas where we experienced a bit of bleed through on the paint. Let's see, there's yellow stain coming Yeah, through. that's a really good one. You can actually see that on camera. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sand back a little bit and then we're going to apply some Dixie Belle Boss and it stops bleed through in its tracks. So we're going to give that a go. We're going to spray it on. But first we're just going to do a light sand. 320 grit paper. Yeah, so we're pouring our Dixie Belle um, Boss Primer into our paint gun here. And my husband's tip is to always pour away from the direction so you don't get that sort of... Well, this isn't paint, it's clear coat anyways. Oh no. See, like that. <laughs> I'm using a strainer by washing it and using it and it ripped. It wasn't dry and it's dissolved with the water, so oh, well. we won't be straining this. Should have used a new strainer. If you let the strain, I've washed the strainer. If you let it dry, then you can reuse it. But in this case, it was still wet. Okay, clean up on aisle one. Okay, we're getting ready to spray the boss. We're just taking some lacquer thinner to the top of this to get off the residue from stripping. And then we'll be able to, um, I'll probably seal it with some boss just to prevent any bleed through. And then I'm gonna take a stencil to it. It's already looking better. It's good. I'm just going over it with some 320 paper. Lightly, very lightly. Now that the drawer is sanded, I'm gonna be applying two coats of Dixie Belle Boss with a brush, and I've got my mini angle brush here. This is now good to go. Wow, looks good, it's good. I got a really flawless finish with the brush, so it's been about an hour, and I'm gonna recoat. I have a mixture of fluff and pearlescent glaze in this container here. I'm just about to give it a stir. I've got about maybe a quarter of the glaze as compared to the chalk paint. And what I'm trying to do is make it just a little bit um, translucent so that when I stencil it, you'll see a touch of the wood grain through. I'm just gonna give it a really good stir to combine. Did add a little bit of water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some on the bristles and I'm gonna offload most of it onto paper towels so that it's good and dry. Now I have a piece of veneer underneath here, so I'm gonna test it out on this. I was just lazy, I had already set this up and had it centered, so I just decided I'm not gonna release the stencil and just try it out. I would just slip the veneer underneath. It does have a little bit of shimmer and it is bleeding somewhat because it's so loose. So perhaps better to leave it thicker, make sure the brush is really, really, really dry. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it on the real thing here. Got a really dry brush, so I'm just gonna start here and come left. Holding down the stencil as I go. Just gonna give light taps. I'm just gonna be really light around. I've got um, this routed feature here, and I don't wanna cover that with paint, so I'm just gonna be really light as I come towards that edge. I don't wanna get paint down in there if I can avoid it. Okay, that's looking nice and light. I don't want to go too dark. I still want to be able to see some of the graining through. So I'm going to dip back in and again dry it off really well. And I'm going to test it 
on this piece of veneer and I can see it's fairly dry. Here's where I'm going to go really light so that I don't push any paint down into that recess. Might have been a good idea just to tape it off. The stenciling is now done, so I'm going to remove these clips and let's just see how it looks. Wow, it turned out really pretty and it's exactly how I wanted it. Just sort of faint, not too solid. So I do think that the pearlescent made a difference. And I do have a little bit of shadowing in here. You can still see the definition of it. So let's just tilt this towards the camera so that you can see it. What do you think? The better way to erase the delineation of the lines between the end of the stencils would be to take a little bit of paint on a dry brush and then I don't have paint on here but just to demonstrate just to stipple between those lines to blend them in so that you're darkening up that side and blending it into the right side. I'm ready to brush clear coat over the front of the drawer and I'm using um, this clear coat by Dixie Belle in a satin finish. Once again, I'm using my mini angle brush. My brush is still damp from having washed it out and that's not a problem. And I'm just gonna do a light coat Just going to brush right into this crease here just to get the excess out. And in this center section, I'm just brushing vertically because so I want to get that out. Brush right into there. Just going to take the tip of my angle brush and I'll move on to my next section here. I've got this on a table and I'm actually on a stool because I need to sort of be above this. So it's a little bit awkward but it works. Now, if you find that you've missed any areas, you can always come back on the second coat and just do whatever you missed. I'm just gonna do the top of the drawer here because this is raw. I'm just gonna use whatever is left over on my brush. I don't want too much finish here because I don't wanna build it up so much that it's gonna cause it to stick. And that's about all I wanna do, done. I'm going to let that dry for one hour and then come back and do another light coat. As you can see, the boss did a beautiful job of preventing bleed through on these lighter colors. It's looking very pretty. So I've got the side just propped up on something underneath here so that I can go right to the bottom. I'm going to mist my brush. And again, I'm using my Dixie Belle Mini. and I'm just gonna brush it on and cut in. And again, I'm gonna mist and dip in and continue where I left off. I don't want to bleed under where I have the tape, so I'm just going to come in from the edge and paint inwards. And I'll just take some long strokes to finish it off. And then I'll let that dry, and I might need a second coat, not sure. But depending on what I do, if I stencil over this, I might not need a second coat, because it'll be busy enough. We've now got two coats of paint on everywhere that we wanted. And now we can simply peel back the tape. Now that my hardware is cleaned, I'm going to take some of this Dixie Belle Golden Gemstone Mousse and I'm just going to touch up where the gold would have been originally. So I'm just going to dip a makeup sponge. I'm just going to run it right along. Now if you like, you can put a second coat on if you want it darker, but you do need to allow it to dry. I kind of like that I can still see the shine of the original metal showing through. I think that's really pretty. 
So I'm going to leave that one to dry. Now, unfortunately here, you can see this hole poking right through. The original bracket that screwed it on, you can see the original one there. It broke off on the other side. So I'm having to put a screw in. Somebody drilled that hole, it wasn't me. So I'm just gonna touch up the screw head. I'll just take my finger and try to smooth that out a little bit. Okay, I think that will mask it well enough. I will set that aside and let it dry just on the top of the lid here so I don't smudge it. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the second one and then I'll let that dry and we'll be able to get it right onto the drawers. Okay, so pretty. Now, I do have some um, diamond mousse here in silver and I could come along and cover up this chromey looking uh, silver metal here with the diamond. I don't know if I will, I kind of, I'm torn. Kind of like the old look of the original metal, but I do have that option. And I'm gonna wash out this makeup sponge here. As you can see, it's got a lot of use. It will last quite a long time. Just wash it out. It rinses right out with water. At this point, I've got everything clear coated and the shelves are back in. I just have to nail down that bottom shelf. It's just uh, lifted up because uh, the clear coat is drying. So now it's just a matter of putting the drawer pulls back on and putting in the drawer and we're gonna be good to go. And here it is finished. It's looking beautiful. Let's zoom in on this drawer. So pretty. That Morocco stencil is amazing. Have a look at the side. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in some of the products that we used, I'll leave links down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe.